The romanization of Chinese is the use of the Latin alphabet to write Chinese. Chinese uses a logographic script, and its characters do not represent phonemes directly. There have been many systems using Roman characters to represent Chinese throughout history. Linguist Daniel Kane recalls, It used to be said that sinologists had to be like musicians, who might compose in one key and readily transcribe into other keys. The dominant international standard for Patongwa since about 1982 has been Hanyu Pinyin. Other well-known systems include Wade Giles, Mandarin, and Yale Romanization, Mandarin and Cantonese. There are many uses for Chinese romanization. Most broadly, it is used to provide a useful way for foreigners who are not skilled at recognizing Chinese script to read and recognize Chinese. It can also be helpful for clarifying pronunciation among Chinese speakers who speak mutually unintelligible Chinese dialects. Romanization facilitates entering characters on standard keyboards such as QWERTY. Chinese dictionaries have complex and competing sorting rules for characters, and romanization systems simplify the problem by listing characters in their Latin form alphabetically. Background the Indian Sanskrit grammarians who went to China 2,000 years ago to work on the translation of Buddhist scriptures into Chinese and the transcription of Buddhist terms into Chinese, discovered the initial sound, final sound, and suprasegmental tone structure of spoken Chinese syllables. This understanding is reflected in the precise Fanchi system, and it is the core principle of all modern systems. While the Fanchi system was ideal for indicating the conventional pronunciation of single, isolated characters in written classical Chinese literature, it was unworkable for the pronunciation of essentially polysyllabic, colloquial spoken Chinese dialects, such as Mandarin. Aside from syllable structure, it is also necessary to indicate tones in Chinese romanization. Tones distinguish the definition of all morphemes in Chinese, and the definition of a word is often ambiguous in the absence of tones. Certain systems such as Wade Giles indicate tone with a number following the syllable, ma 1, ma 2, ma 3, ma 4. Others, like pinyin, indicate the tone with diacritics, ma, 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 ma. Still, the system of Guoi Romatsi national romanization, bypasses the issue of introducing non-letter symbols by changing the letters within the syllable, as in MHA, ma, 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 each of which contains the same vowel, but a different tone. Uses Non-Chinese Teaching spoken and written Chinese to foreigners Making the actual pronunciation conventions of spoken Chinese intelligible to non-Chinese speaking students, especially those with no experience of a tonal language. Making the syntactic structure of Chinese intelligible to those only familiar with Latin grammar. Transcribing the citation pronunciation of specific Chinese characters according to the pronunciation conventions of a specific European language, to allow the insertion of that Chinese pronunciation into a Western text. Allowing instant communication in colloquial Chinese between Chinese and non-Chinese speakers via a phrase book. Chinese Identifying the specific pronunciation of a character within a specific context, e.g., Xing as Xing to walk, behavior, conduct, or hang, a store. Recitation of Chinese text in one Chinese dialect by literate speakers of another mutually unintelligible one, e.g., Mandarin and Cantonese. Learning classical or modern Chinese. Use with a standard QWERTY keyboard. Replacing Chinese characters to bring functional literacy to illiterate Chinese speakers. Book indexing, dictionary entry sorting, and cataloging in general. Non-Chinese systems The Wade, Wade Giles, and Postal systems still appear in the European literature, but generally only within a passage cited from an earlier work. Most European language texts use the Chinese Hanyu Pinyin system, usually without tone marks, since 1979 as it was adopted by the People's Republic of China. Missionary systems 
The first consistent system for transcribing Chinese words in Latin alphabet is thought to have been designed in 1583-88 by Matteo Ricci and Michel Ruggieri for their Portuguese Chinese Dictionary. The first ever European Chinese Dictionary. Unfortunately, the manuscript was misplaced in the Jesuit archives in Rome, and not rediscovered until 1934. The dictionary was finally published in 2001. During the winter of 1598, Ricci, with the help of his Jesuit colleague Lazzaro Catania (1560–1640), compiled a Chinese-Portuguese dictionary as well, in which tones of the Romanized Chinese syllables were indicated with diacritical marks. This work has also been lost, but not rediscovered. Catania's system, with its accounting for the tones, was not lost, however. It was used e.g. by Michal Boim and his two Chinese assistants in the first publication of the original and Romanized text of the Nestorian Steel, which appeared in China Illustrata 1667. An encyclopedic scope work compiled by Athanasius Kircher, in 1626 the Jesuit missionary Nicholas Trigo came up with a romanization system in his Ziru or Muzi, simplified Chinese, Shi Ru or Muzi traditional Chinese, Shi Ru or Muzi pinyin, Ziru or Muzi, literally, aid to the eyes and ears of Western literati. In his 1670 Portuguese language Vocabulario da Lingua Mandarina, the Dominican missionary Francisco Vero expanded on Trigo's system. His Spanish language Vocabulario de la Lengua Mandarina was published in 1682 and his Arte de la Lengua Mandarina, published in 1703, was the most comprehensive grammar to date. Later on, many linguistically comprehensive systems were made by the Protestants, such as that used for Robert Morrison's dictionary and the leg romanization. In their missionary activities they had contact with many languages in Southeast Asia, and they created systems that could be used consistently across all of the languages with which they were concerned. Wade Giles The first system to be widely accepted was the 1859 system of the British diplomat Thomas Wade, revised and improved by Herbert Giles into the 1892 Wade-Giles system. Apart from the correction of a number of ambiguities and inconsistencies within the Wade system, the innovation of the Wade-Giles system was that it also indicated tones. The Wade-Giles system used the spiritus asper, diacritical marks, and superscript digits, e.g. chu of four. French EFEO system the system devised in 1902 by Serafin Kubor of the École Française d'Extreme Orient was used in most of the French-speaking world to transliterate Chinese until the middle of the 20th century, then gradually replaced by Han Yu Pinyin. Postal Romanization Postal Romanization, standardized in 1906, combined traditional spellings, local dialect, and Nanking syllabary. Nanking syllabary is one of various romanization systems given in a popular Chinese-English dictionary by Herbert Giles. It is based on Nanjing pronunciation. The French administered the post office at this time. The system resembles traditional romanizations used in France. Many of these traditional spellings were created by French missionaries in the 17th and 18th centuries when Nanjing dialect was China's standard. Postal romanization was used only for place names. Yale system The Yale Romanization System was created at Yale University during World War II to facilitate communication between American military personnel and their Chinese counterparts. It uses a more regular spelling of Mandarin phonemes than other systems of its day. This system was used for a long time, because it was used for phrase books and part of the Yale system of teaching Chinese. The Yale system taught Mandarin using spoken, colloquial Chinese patterns. The Yale system of Mandarin has since been superseded by the Chinese Han Yu Pinyin system. Chinese systems Qian Xinzi The first modern indigenous Chinese romanization system, the Qian Xinzi, Qi Yin Xin, New Phonetic Alphabet was developed in 1892 by Lu Zhangzang (1854–1928). It was used to write the sounds of the Shaman dialect of Southern Min. Some people also invented other phoneme systems. 
Voiromatsi. In 1923, the Kuomintang Ministry of Education instituted a National Language Unification Commission which, in turn, formed an 11-member romanization unit. The political circumstances of the time prevented any positive outcome from the formation of this unit. A new voluntary working subcommittee was independently formed by a group of five scholars who strongly advocated romanization. The committee, which met 22 times over a 12-month period (1925–1926), consisted of Zhao Yuanren, Lin Yutang, Qian Zantong, Li Jingxi, Li Jin Shi, and Wen Wang Yi. They developed the Guoi Romatsi system, proclaimed on September 26, 1928. The most distinctive aspect of this new system was that, rather than relying upon marks or numbers, it indicated the tonal variations of the root syllable by a systematic variation within the spelling of the syllable itself. The entire system could be written with a standard QWERTY keyboard. Despite the fact that it was created to eventually replace Chinese characters, and that it was constructed by linguists, Guoi Romatsi was never extensively used for any purpose other than delivering the pronunciation of specific Chinese characters in dictionaries. The complexity of its tonal system was such that it was never popular. Latin Xia Sinwens The work towards constructing the Latin Xia Sinwens system began in Moscow as early as 1928 when the Soviet Scientific Research Institute on China sought to create a means through which the large Chinese population living in the far eastern region of the USSR could be made literate, facilitating their further education. From the very outset, it was intended that the Latin Shisinwen system, once established, would supersede the Chinese characters. They decided to use the Latin alphabet because they thought that it would serve their purpose better than Cyrillic. Unlike Guoi Romatsi, with its complex method of indicating tones, Latin Shisinwen's system does not indicate tones at all, and it is not Mandarin-specific and so could be used for other Chinese varieties. The eminent Moscow-based Chinese scholar Ku Chubai (1899–1935) and the Russian linguist V. S. Kolokolov (1896–1979) devised a prototype romanization system in 1929. In 1931, a coordinated effort between the Soviet sinologists B. M. Alexeyev, A. A. Dragonev and A. G. Sherprinson, and the Moscow-based Chinese scholars Ku Chubai, Wu Yuzhang, Lin Bok, Lin Bo Ku Shao San, Wang Shangbao, and Xu Teli established the Latin Shisinwen system. The system was supported by a number of Chinese intellectuals such as Guo Morwo and Lu Xuan, and trials were conducted amongst 100,000 Chinese immigrant workers for about four years and later, in 1940–1942, in the communist-controlled shaanxi gansu ningxia border region of China. In November 1949, the railways in China's northeast adopted the Latin Shisinwen system for all their telecommunications. For a time, the system was very important in spreading literacy in northern China, and more than 300 publications totaling half a million issues appeared in Latin Shisinwen's. However, the use of this system was later cancelled due to its proposed target of superseding logographic Chinese characters altogether, which was deemed too radical. In 1944 the Latinization movement was officially curtailed in the communist-controlled areas of China on the pretext that there were insufficient trained cadres capable of teaching the system. It is more likely that, as the communists prepared to take power in a much wider territory, they had second thoughts about the rhetoric that surrounded the Latinization movement. In order to obtain the maximum popular support, they withdrew support from a movement that deeply offended many supporters of the traditional writing system. Hanyu Pinyin In October 1949, the Association for Reforming the Chinese Written Language was established. Wu Yuzhang, one of the creators of Latin Shisinwens, was appointed chairman. All of the members of its initial governing body belonged to either the Latin Shisinwens movement Ni Heishu, Ni Hai Shu Lin Handa, Lin Honda etc., or the Guoi Romatsi movement Li Jingxi, Li Jin Shi Luo Changpei, etc., for the most part, they were also highly trained linguists. Their first directive 1949-1952, was to take the phonetic project adopting the Latin alphabet as the main object of their research. 
Linguist Zhou Yuguang was put in charge of this branch of the committee. In a speech delivered on January 10, 1958, Zhou Enlai observed that the committee had spent three years attempting to create a non Latin Chinese phonetic alphabet, they had also attempted to adapt Zuyan Fahao, but no satisfactory result could be obtained. And the Latin alphabet was then adopted. He also emphatically stated, the development of the Hanyu Pinyin system was a complex process involving decisions on many difficult issues, such as Should Hanyu Pinyin's pronunciation be based on that of Beijing? Was Hanyu Pinyin going to supersede Chinese written characters altogether, or would it simply provide a guide to pronunciation? Should the traditional Chinese writing system be simplified? Should Hanyu Pinyin use the Latin alphabet? Should Hanyu Pinyin indicate tones in all cases, as with Guoi Romatsi? Should Hanyu Pinyin be Mandarin specific, or adaptable to other dialects and other Chinese varieties? Was Hanyu Pinyin to be created solely to facilitate the spread of Patonghua throughout China, despite the fact that the draft scheme for a Chinese phonetic alphabet, published in People's China, on March 16, 1956, contained certain unusual and peculiar characters. The Committee for Research into Language Reform soon reverted to the Latin alphabet, citing the following reasons The Latin alphabet is extensively used by scientists regardless of their native tongue, and technical terms are frequently written in Latin. The Latin alphabet is simple to write and easy to read. It has been used for centuries all over the world. It is easily adaptable to the task of recording Chinese pronunciation. While the use of the Cyrillic alphabet would strengthen ties with the USSR, the Latin alphabet is familiar to most Russian students, and its use would strengthen the ties between China and many of its Southeast Asian neighbors who are already familiar with the Latin alphabet. As a response to Mao Zedong's remark that cultural patriotism should be a weighty factor. In the choice of an alphabet, despite the fact that the Latin alphabet is foreign, it will serve as a strong tool for economic and industrial expansion, and, moreover, the fact that two of the most patriotic Chinese, Ku Chubai and Lu Xuan, were such strong advocates of the Latin alphabet indicates that the choice does not indicate any lack of patriotism. On the basis that the British, French, Germans, Spanish, Polish and Czechoslovakians have all modified the Latin alphabet for their own usage, and because the Latin alphabet is derived from the Greek alphabet, which, in turn came from Phoenician and Egyptian, there is as much shame attached to using the Latin alphabet as there is in using Arabic numerals and the conventional mathematical symbols, regardless of their point of origin, the movement for language reform came to a standstill during the Cultural Revolution and nothing was published on language reform or linguistics from 19 1966 to 1972. The Pinyin subtitles that had first appeared on the masthead of the People's Daily Newspaper and the Red Flag Journal in 1958 did not appear at all between July 1966 and January 1977. In its final form, Hanyu Pinyin was used to indicate pronunciation only was exclusively based on the pronunciation of the Beijing dialect. Included tone marks embodied the traditional initial sound, final sound, and suprasegmental tone model was written in the Latin alphabet. Anu Pinyin has developed from Mao. S. 1951 Directive, through the promulgation on November 1, 1957 of a draft version by the State Council, to its final form being approved by the State Council in September 1978, to being accepted in 1982 by the International Organization for Standardization as the standard for transcribing Chinese, John de Francis has described Mao Zedong. S. belief that pinyin would eventually replace Chinese characters, but this has not come to pass, and in fact such a plan had already ceased together with the end of Latin Shisinwen's movement. Variations in pronunciation The Chinese and Japanese repository stated that romanization would standardize the various differing pronunciations Chinese often had for one word, which was common for all mostly unwritten languages. 
Contributor Rev. James Summers wrote, in 1863, those who know anything of the rude and unwritten languages of the other parts of the world will have no difficulty in imagining the state of the spoken dialects of China. The most various shades of pronunciation are common, arising from the want of the analytic process of writing by means of an alphabet. A Chinaman has no conception of the number or character of the sounds which he utters when he says mouthping, indeed one man will call it ma, more bing, and another mo piong, without the first man perceiving the difference. By the people themselves these changes are considered to be simple variations, which are of no consequence. And if we look into the English of Chaucer's or of Wycliffe, S time, or the French of Marco Polo's age, we shall find a similar looseness and inattention to correct spelling, because these languages were written by few, and when the orthography was unsettled. Times are changed. Every poor man may now learn to read and write his own language in less than a month, and with a little pains he may do it correctly with practice. The consequence is that a higher degree of comfort and happiness is reached by many who could never have risen above the level of the serf and the slave without this intellectual lever. The poor may read the gospel as well as hear it preached, and the cottage library becomes a never-failing treasury of profit to the laboring classes. See also Comparison of Chinese Romanization systems Transliteration of Chinese Transcription into Chinese characters Romanization of Japanese Notes References Citations Sources External links Donald McGillivray, 1907. A Mandarin Romanized Dictionary of Chinese, 2 ed. Printed at the Presbyterian Mission Press. Retrieved 15 May 2011. China Christian Educational Association, 1904. Primer of the Standard System of Mandarin Romanization. Shanghai, printed at the Amer. Presbyterian Mission Press. p. 78. Retrieved 15 May 2011. The University of California. Educational Association of China, F. E. Mags, 1905. The Standard System of Mandarin Romanization, Volume 2. Printed at American Presbyterian Mission Press. Retrieved 15 May 2011. Educational Association of China, 1904. The Standard System of Mandarin Romanization, Introduction, Sound Table, and Syllabary. Shanghai, American Presbyterian Mission Press. p. 100. Retrieved 15 May 2011. The University of California. Educational Association of China, F. E. Mags, 1904. The Standard System of Mandarin Romanization, Volume 2. Shanghai, printed at American Presbyterian Mission Press. Mandarin Chinese Pinyin Table The complete listing of all pinyin syllables and their variations used in Standard Mandarin, along with native speaker pronunciation for each syllable. Overview of Chinese Phonetic Transcription Java-based tool for converting texts into different romanization systems Chinese romanization www.pinyin.info www.romanization.com Chinese phonetic conversion tool converts between pinyin, zuyin, and other formats.